This is the next video in the chapter on composition of solutions. We just learned about how to use the correct terminology for solutions, solute, solvent, and solution. And now we need to introduce our chemistry favorite way to describe how much of a solute is present, which is called the molarity. Molarity is a way of measuring how much of something is in a solution. You will also hear it called a concentration, figuring out how concentrated something is. So molarity has a very simple formula and we represent it using a capital M, not to be confused with the small m that stands for mass, capital M. So molarity is a measure of the number of moles of solute over the number of liters of solution. And we can write that in terms of symbols, capital M equals N for moles over V for volume. and we'll give that a box because it's important. There we are. And it's important to note that I included not only what goes on the top and the bottom, but what it's the unit of. So the top number is only a measurement of the solute. It's only the amount of one piece in the solution, whereas the bottom number is in liters of solution. This, so this is everything in your solution. Everything in the flask goes into this measurement, whereas the top measurement is just one of those components. So we're gonna do an example problem. I've already pre-written it. So go ahead and pause here if you need a second to write it down. Okay, so this example problem says to make 100.0 milliliters of 0.225 molarity sodium hydroxide solution, how many moles of sodium hydroxide are needed? So our formula says molarity equals moles, moles over volume. And I see that I can just use dimensional analysis to solve this because all the units will cancel out as I need them to. So I'm gonna start with the 100.0 milliliters and I'm gonna go all out and include words so that I can be sure that I'm measuring the volume of the correct thing. Cause I need the solution part to be on the bottom and the solute sodium hydroxide part to be on the top. So this number is gonna be my volume, Got my molarity here and I'm looking for moles of sodium hydroxide. So we're gonna take volume of solution, and if I multiply it by the molarity, 0 0.225 moles per liter, that will cancel, but I'm gonna include the unit. So molarity is in moles of solute, which is sodium hydroxide, over liters of solution. So I'm gonna specify that. And now I see that I have tried to cancel milliliters with liters and that isn't going to work. So I need to throw in a conversion factor. One liter of solution over 1000 milliliters of solution. There we go. So milliliters of solution and milliliters of solution cancel. Liters of solution and liters of solution leaving us with moles of sodium hydroxide and I'm out of space. So we'll write it on the next line, 0 0.0225 moles of sodium hydroxide are needed to make this solution. So let's go back and identify our solute in solution because I forgot to do that at the beginning. So our solute is the thing that's being dissolved. That's our sodium hydroxide. Our solvent was the thing it was dissolved in. It wasn't listed, it didn't tell us what it was, but we did see the little AQ after sodium hydroxide. So our solvent is gonna be water. And then both of those together make the solution. Sorry, I intended to write that first. Okay. So that's cool. We know how many moles of sodium hydroxide we need. 
to make that solution. But the last time I checked, there is no such thing as a mole meter. We cannot just go into the lab and ask the balance how many moles we have of something. So we're gonna need to know the mass in order to do anything in the laboratory. Knowing the number of moles of something is definitely useful. We will need to know that as we're trying to balance equations. But in order to measure something out on a balance, we need to know the mass. So let's do that problem again, bonus problem. And let's solve for the mass this time so that we can actually make the solution in the laboratory. So we finished with moles and we know how to convert from moles to grams already. We can use the molar mass. So we'll do the problem again as if we'd started from the beginning because that's what it would look like in real life. And we'll tack on an extra term. So we'll take our 100 mils of solution We'll convert that into liters of solution. Multiply by our molarity, 0.225 moles of sodium hydroxide for one liter of solution. That's the same thing that we, we did before. And so now to get from moles of sodium hydroxide to grams of sodium hydroxide, we need the molar mass number of grams in one mole of sodium hydroxide. And from our handy dandy periodic table, sodium is over here at 23, hydrogen is here at one, and oxygen 15.999. May or may not be able to read that. Okay, so adding those together, 15.999 for oxygen, 1.008 for hydrogen and 23 for sodium should give us 40. Or at least it did when I added it by myself. 40.00 grams of sodium hydroxide per mole. And that will give us 100 over 1,000 times 0.225 times 40, 0 0.900 grams of sodium hydroxide. So just under a gram. Okay. So now we have the mass. So now we can actually make this because we know the mass and we know what volume we're trying to make, but this technique doesn't work for everything. Not all solutes are solid. For solids, awesome, very useful, calculate the mass, no problem. But some solutes are liquid. And for liquid, we need a new plan. So for liquids, we are going to do something called a dilution from a stock solution. So we're gonna start with a liquid and we're gonna use it to make another liquid solution. So we will talk about dilution in the next video.